This is for uh, Benton Dins Dinsmore. Um, so the first problem you have right off the bat is your atmospheric perspective. Um, you've got no sense of the mountains here or anything like that. These mountains are just kind of free floating here. And so you really want to give them a sense of background, foreground, middle ground type of information. And so what I'm going to just do is I've separated a lot of these layers into smaller pieces. And so, um, you know, picking this red tone from the sky, what I would most likely do is add some of this red tone um, to the foreground layer as kind of a gradient style. So what what will happen is, let me just turn this off here. So what will happen is these mountains, um, you want to have some tonal value of of how things are kind of dissipating in there things like that um, that was not the right one I want to use this one instead so by simply putting this in there and masking that off um, you know and, and getting some of that that information in there maybe a little bit of gray because most of your sky is gray is here so um, that's kind of the thing that I want to you want to put in there um, but that's going to start popping that background out, all right? And that that basically gets uh, that that background um, starts fading out the layering effect of how things look. Um, same thing with your tanks; they need to be kind of adjusted too. And what I would do is probably put them underneath, um, or maybe just let's uh, clone this layer here. And you know, we can put them in in an underneath here. And so that that, as you can see, starts popping that out. So the big issue I'm having with the whole scene is you've got this guy running, this guy, uh, you know, shooting, these tanks doing absolutely nothing. And then you have this guy sitting there like pointing a finger. Um, you know, and and the the story of that just kind of, dissipates when I when you start looking at it that way um, so I would probably take this guy and at this point I would probably just erase him and get rid of him uh, from that standpoint um, so let me actually grab new layer and something like that just just to give me a, uh, a clean underlay so that that's the first thing that I would say um, the next thing that I would say is you know you've got this tank here these two tanks are side by side and they look like too perfect together um, so what I would do is I would tell you to take this tank um, and let's uh, actually just take this tank and move it over here so that it gets actually like so and we'll move this up and then select and transform this guy to be a little bit bigger and move him in the foreground a little bit more and by moving him in the foreground um, it gives that a sense of you know more scale um, and you know he's maybe not as big as something like that you know, maybe he's not as big as he needs to be, but now it gives uh, a size relationship to things. Um, so that's that's some of the things that I would probably dump right there. Um, and then, oops, nope, I don't want to do that. Let's just merge these two back. If we're going to keep that second tank in there, um, that looks a little bit more realistic. Now you're popping things in the foreground, background. And then from here, I'm just going to really quickly paint over here, whatever, like so. So this guy here, the problem is you, he's so massive, he's got, he had, he should have its own sense of perspective, his own sense of like uh, foreground, middle ground, background. 
And then the next thing is I would say this here also is in need of kind of adjustment. So I'm going to just grab this and we're just going to grab him because they've got the guy cut out. And I'm going to cut him that out. And what I would do here is I would change the saturation up. And I would definitely light darken the, the foreground. Um, because this is now getting to be, um, you know, really, really close. And that's, that's a big aspect. And then this guy here, I would do the same thing. Um, he needs to be darker. Um, he needs to be more saturated. Actually, probably go into levels instead and play with it a little bit. But as you can see... And maybe we'll just pull some of the light out here. You know, as you can see, now that that's popping him in the foreground a little bit more. And then what we can do is we can go in and um, create a new layer here and start adding in maybe some dust or, you know, something like that that starts layering this character back. So in this case, I would just do, let's do kind of a, uh, pick one of these gray tones here and kind of start pasting this in there. And let's grab undo that. Let's grab this guy and your major robot here. And as you can see, that starts starts tweaking that. And I don't need it, you know, super, super huge, but it gives me an idea of where where things are going. Um, I could probably even put this guy underneath. Um, let's put this up here, grab that layer, and let's put this above it, and then let's put, so, so basically what I'm doing is I'm layering this stuff together and creating a, a more sense of, you know, dirt flying all over, I'd probably put some sparks in there, things like that. Um, and then you also want to add in some of the tonal values of this because you've got this, this stuff is way too bright. So at this point, I would grab this guy and probably desaturate him just a hair uh, so that it doesn't, you know, he's not popping out like a sore thumb with the brightness. Um, and then if you want to do this electrical thing, that's when I would take this and this is you know pure energy so it's going to be super saturated and super bright and start popping that out so that's you know it, you really need to take take care of the atmospheric perspective um, because right now it's kind of all over the place and it's it's just copy pasted images so in this case I'm just going to grab this and paint this back in So I'm just really quickly going to kind of shuffle that around. Um, but now you can see, you know, it starts taking that effect as, you know, it's a little bit more in depth. Um, you know, things, things look a little bit brighter, that type of thing. And then here you might want to use a burn if this is, um, uh, not burn, dodge, sorry. If, if this is a, you know, bright tool, you might want to pop that out a little bit more. Same thing on this here, you want to really push that that aspect of, of this forcing its way in there. Um, and so those are just things that you can kind of do to make it feel like it's, it's more interesting. Um, and then start putting in debris, um, you know, just explosions, uh, noise, that type of thing. And that'll actually sell, sell it a lot more. Um, I'm just gonna 
rib, I don't know, just some basic stuff here. And on a new layer, you could definitely, definitely put in some Some different particles and different pieces. There's something selected. No. Let's check my brush here. No, oh, it should work. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, so. Oops, I'm gonna burn. That's why it's not working. Uh, so let's just grab some pieces here. And you know some some explosions. Um, put some smoke in there. Um, you know, and you know that type of thing. And then do a little bit of a, a radial blur or a uh, motion blur. Um, maybe maybe something like that. And then just kind of layer things up on it. Um, and that, that starts getting it much more dynamic and more interesting. Um, maybe we're going to add some you know, red particle flakes here. And you can do this in layers. Um, and you know, there's different, different dirt. So now it looks like you know, maybe a shell hit or something like that. And then again, you know, keep doing the motion blur. Uh, keep, keep playing with it. Keep building it up but get your atmospheric perspective down and then then do your value source um, so that it reads well um, and that's going to help you out all right i hope that helps